You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. I wanted a little on the sticky side. With a modest kitchen and some standard equipment, you can cook food that you would be proud to serve. There is my shrimp. All you need is a few helpful kitchen techniques, the ability to follow a recipe, a passion for food, and a fascination with cooking. Just follow along the rib cage. That is so good. My name is Dennis. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. It's been warm here lately in Southern California, really warm. It's been ice cream weather. And a friend of mine called me with a suggestion for ice cream. He probably wants ice cream, which is okay. He suggested, and I like his idea, pecan praline ice cream. That sounds really good. So that's what I want to make today. I want to make pecan praline ice cream. Let's start cooking. In a medium sized saucepan, I'm going to put one cup, 237 milliliters of, you can use either whole milk or half and half. I'm using half and half because I always have that in the refrigerator for coffee. And then I want to put in one whole egg. and five egg yolks. So I have my little separator here that's kind of neat. I'm going to separate out these eggs. That's a fresh egg. In fact, I just bought these yesterday. So there are my egg yolks. That, those were five egg yolks from large eggs plus one whole large egg. I'm going to mix this up and then set this in a double boiler. I want to warm this mixture up to about 160 degrees. Although it's extremely rare, about one, they say, about one in every 30,000 eggs can be infected with salmonella. 30,000 eggs, that's a lot of eggs. Nonetheless, just to be cautious, I'm going to heat this up to 160 degrees. That should kill any bacteria that might, although highly improbable, might be present. So I want to whisk this together. I'm going to use my electric whisk, and then I'm going to put this in a double boiler to warm it up. I've brought my water up here to a boil. This is about one cup, roughly 240 milliliters of water. That's what I need for my setup. I need just enough water so that when I set my inner pan in there, it'll just come into contact with that water. I'm gonna turn my heat down now to medium low, and then I'm gonna use a digital thermometer here to check my temperature. Obviously, it's gonna be low right now. It's 67 degrees. But I'm gonna heat this up, as I said, to 160 degrees, that's about 71 degrees Celsius, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason why I'm doing a double boiler, rather than just doing this directly over the heat, some people do, they'll, they'll make a custard, or they'll cook their egg mixture right over direct heat. The water in that pan isn't going to exceed 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius. Therefore, I don't have to worry about getting my mixture too hot. It's not going to come up to 250 degrees, even with the liquid. I mean, it's not going to come that high, but it's not going to come up too high. And therefore, I'm going to be running the risk of cooking those eggs to the point where they turn into scrambled eggs. Okay, this is continuing the heating. I don't know whether you can see that. I'm just coming up to 160, 161. So I'm going to turn my heat off, get this out of the hot water, and then my next step now is I want to cool this down. And that's not really a custard, but there's my safe, part of my safe ice cream mixture. I have here a large bowl and my box of ice here. 
So I'm setting up an ice bath. my custard and I'm just going to nestle that right down in there and that'll cool this custard mixture down pretty rapidly and then I'll start setting up to prepare the pecans. I have in the meantime lined a small baking sheet with parchment paper. I have here three ounces 85 grams of pecans. You can use either the halves or you can use chopped pecans. It doesn't matter. It's all going to get chopped up later on. I bought the halves because they were less expensive than the chopped pecans. Might as well save some money. I'm also heating my oven up to 375 degrees Fahrenheit which is 191 degrees Celsius. I'm going to roast these for about 10 minutes. Here are my pecans now out of the oven after roasting for 10 minutes. Next I can start caramelizing my sugar for the praline. In a small saucepan over medium heat I'm heating one quarter cup, that's about 60 milliliters of water, with one half cup, 100 grams of sugar. Right now the water is there just to help to dissolve the sugar. I'll bring this to a boil and as that water evaporates off the temperature will rise and the sugar syrup will get hotter and hotter and it'll start to caramelize. I want to bring this up to the hard crack stage which is 310 degrees Fahrenheit, 154 degrees Celsius. All right, as you can see, this is starting to come to a boil. So I'm going to turn my heat down to medium low. It's a nice clear liquid now, indicating that all the sugar is dissolved. As this heats up, the water will boil off, the sugar syrup will thicken, and the sugar itself will start to melt, and it'll start getting very hot. I want to bring it up to 310 degrees Fahrenheit, 154 degrees Celsius. That's the hard crack stage. Oh, and at this stage I don't want to stir it anymore. I can swirl the pan a little bit if I want, but I don't want to stir in a lot of bubbles into that. My liquid is now turning to a gold color. I just turned my heat off. I'm checking my temperature on there. Oh, it's well above 310 degrees. So now what I want to do is... There are my roasted pecans. I want to pour that over the top. And that's why I lined that baking sheet with parchment paper because I know it won't stick to that. Any sugar that's left in the pan just fill it with water and let it sit for a while. The water will dissolve that sugar. Now I have to wait for this to cool because that's quite hot right now above 300 10 degrees. While my praline is cooling I'm going to return back to my custard there. What I'm going to add to this now is one half cup 120 milliliters of heavy cream, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I keep mine in a little eyedropper bottle and I know each one of these is a quarter of a teaspoon. Two, three, and four. And then two tablespoons of sugar. I'm increasing the sugar a little bit because I will have lost some sugar in that pan that remained in the pan. And then using my whisk again, I'm just going to mix this up. All right, that should be good enough. Mostly what I was concerned with. I mixed that for maybe a couple of minutes. I wanted to make sure I got that sugar dissolved so that it wouldn't settle to the bottom. So now I'm just ready to start adding my praline, but I have to chop that up first. My praline now is cooled down thoroughly. This should be 
at the hard crack stage. Snap. That's what I want. And I have set up in the meantime my food processor. Put all these pieces in there. Oh, those pecans smell so good. I don't like pecans because they're bitter, but when they're toasted, they have a really delicious flavor. So if I'm going to use them at all, I toast them. All right, let me get this sugar off my fingers and then I'll be ready to chop this up. I'm going to put a barrier over my bowl here, as I usually do, because otherwise it, I mean, it's going to tear this, batter, this barrier up, but it helps to prevent the stuff from getting up inside of all of this stuff in my lid. And I want to start off by just pulsing this and coarsely chopping my praline to start off with. All right, that looks good. And then what I want to do, and this is already tearing through, is I want to spoon some of this out, but not the larger pieces of sugar. I want to take out, if I can, about a third of this. I actually spread it out onto a piece of parchment paper so that it would make it more easily to see the sugar crystals. I have separate plans for that. Now returning back to my food processor, I'm going to chop this down now fairly fine. I want to reduce this to a powder. Okay, that should be good. And this time nothing broke through the barrier because the pieces now were so much smaller than those big pieces of sugar. I want you to see the texture of this. It's crumbly, but it's smooth. No large chunks in there. That's what I want. I'm just about ready to start making my ice cream here. So now I'm returning back to my ice cream batter there. Don't need that blade in there. And I'm going to put my finely chopped praline in my mixture. Scrape this bowl, make sure I get out all the good stuff. That looks good. Gonna get this all stirred in. And this now becomes my liquid that I can start to put into my ice cream maker. And one thing that I thought might be wise to do to make sure I don't have any large chunks in there is I'm going to use my mixer blade to get that all mixed up. I have in the meantime now set up my ice cream maker. This is a canister that you store in the freezer for at least 24 hours. This has been in there for two days. And inside the lid is this separate paddle unit. I kind of hold it in place with a finger while I do this. Lock the lid into place. Turn it on. Should start rotating. There it goes. You want to get it rotating first, otherwise your mixture will stick to the outside and jam the blade. Then pour in your batter. Get everything in there. And if all goes according to plan, this will be ready in about 20, 15 to 20 minutes. This has been churning now for 20 minutes. 
and I can actually hear that motor starting to bog down. And this is actually warm. That motor's working hard because the ice cream has gotten so thick. So now I'm going to transfer this to my ice cream container. I bought this specifically for ice cream. Look at how nice and thick that is. Keep going, keep going. Oh good, free another day. Indiana wants me. All right, I'm gonna scoop this out of my container. See, it's already starting to freeze to the wall of the container. One more step. Here is my nut mixture that I set aside. I'm gonna put that in there. And then I'm just going to kind of swirl that in without mixing it in completely. Just to kind of give it some texture. That's it. I'm not going to stir it in. I'm just going to lightly swirl it in. And now this goes into the freezer. My ice cream has been in the freezer for a while. The ideal temperature supposedly at which to serve ice cream is 6 degrees Fahrenheit to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 14 to 12, minus 14 to minus 12 degrees Celsius. Okay, put the ice cream in a bowl. And the last step, of course, is to see how good that tastes. I'm so looking forward to this. I know already that it's going to taste good because I took a little cheater taste out of the ice cream maker while it was churning. But I want to see what it's like with the coarse chopped, coarse chopped nuts in it. See, with that coarse chop in there, you get some of the texture. It's not a smooth ice cream. I mean, it is, but there's a little bit of extra texture in there because of those coarsely chopped nuts. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my pecan praline ice cream. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, Visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.